Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on calculating a critical value chart for the T distribution using Microsoft Excel. Oftentimes in counseling research, when we are using either an independent samples T test or a dependent samples T test, we need to access the critical values for the T distribution to determine its relationship to the T statistic. So if the T statistic is greater than the critical value, we reject the null hypothesis. If the T statistic is less than the critical value, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Now, there are many critical value charts for the T distribution available on the internet. However, what's useful about creating one in Excel is you can customize what confidence levels that you want to appear on your chart you can customize the degrees of freedom that are going to appear on your chart and the general look of the chart, the color scheme and the borders you can specify the design using Excel. Using this method is particularly helpful when you're working with a large value for the degrees of freedom. Many of the charts available on the internet do not have a degrees of freedom value that goes into the higher ranges. So for example, if you're working with 315 degrees of freedom, it would be challenging to find a critical value chart that would list the specific critical value 315 degrees of freedom. You may find one that provides the critical value for 300 degrees and then skips to 400 degrees of freedom. However, when we are making these calculations, it's important we have the critical value for the exact degrees of freedom and for the precise confidence level. The larger the degrees of freedom, the more difficult it's going to be to find a chart that has that specific value. In Excel, however, that's no problem. We can put in any value for the degrees of freedom and it'll calculate the critical value. So let's take a look at what I've typed in this Excel worksheet so far. I have the confidence level and I've listed just a few here, the 80%, 90%, 95%, 99% and 99.9% .9 confidence levels. These are the most common and really the 95% confidence level would be the most common among these. On occasion in counseling research we'll use a 99% confidence level or a 99.9, .9, less frequently 80% and 90%. And then for each of these confidence levels, I specified the one tail p-value and the two tail p-value. Many of the charts available on the internet only list one or the other. I think it's important to have both. And you can see that the two tail p-value is simply the one tail p-value multiplied by 2. So first I'll show you how you'd start to build a critical value chart for T distribution starting with 1 degree of freedom and we'll go up to 15 degrees of freedom and that'll take us to the last cell visible here. So I'll move into cell A5 and enter a 1 and then a 2 and I'm just going to autofill down to cell A19, so I have 1 through 15. And then I'm going to start the calculations for the critical values in cell B5, which would be 1 degree of freedom at the 80% confidence level. And the function that I'll be using will be the same function I'll use to this entire region, all the critical values. So it'll be equal sign T dot inv.2t. You can see this returns the two-tailed inverse of the student's t distribution. It has two arguments, probability and degrees of freedom. So for probability, we want the two-tail p-value, in this case 0.2, or cell b3. For the degrees of freedom, we want cell a5, one degree of freedom. 
you can see there the critical value is 3.077. So at this point, I want to be able to use the autofill function to complete the rest of the critical value chart. But I know if I autofill right or down, I'm going to lose some of the values in the function that I need. It's going to throw the cells off. So I need to lock in columns and rows appropriately so I can autofill to the right and down. So if we consider what happens when I autofill to the right, we can see that right now it's a relative reference A5. That's going to move from column A, and we don't want that to happen. So I'm going to move in here and put a dollar sign in front of the A, and that's going to make that absolute for the column, but the row is going to remain relative. And as I autofill down, I want to make sure that I stay on the two-tail p-value for this function. And we can see with b3, if I were to autofill down now, it would move to b4 and b5 and so on, and that would give me an incorrect result. So I want to lock the row in place. I want to make that absolute, so I'll put the dollar sign right before the 3. So now this function can be autofilled to the right, and we have all the correct critical values here, and autofilled down, and we're given all the correct critical values of the t-distribution. So again, I've just populated this to 15 degrees of freedom. You can use as many values in this column as you want. And you can also use this to calculate specific values. So for instance, if I go here and delete everything below one degree of freedom, I can just change this value to the value that I want for degrees of freedom. So say I want 28 degrees of freedom. I'll just enter 28. And you can see we have the corresponding critical values, and all of these are correct. I hope you found this video on calculating critical values for the t-distribution in Excel to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.